You may have seen there was a concerning piece of news today reported all across the American press. And the headlines were similar. Basically, the United States was listed for the first time as a, quote, backsliding democracy in a report issued by a European think tank. The Stockholm-based International Institute for Democracy and Electoral Assistance referred to the U.S. as the bastion of global democracy, but noted that our country fell victim to authoritarian tendencies itself and was knocked down a significant number of steps on the democratic scale. You will notice that the Washington Post chose to illustrate this story, the photo of the insurrectionist mob facing off against police officers on January 6th. That day, of course, is the most striking example of our democratic backsliding. But this report reflects something deeper that is happening in our political culture, one, something we document often here. One faction in particular on the American right is giving up on some of the basic tenets of liberal democracy. They're giving up on the rule of law and the nonviolent use of civic action to settle political differences and turning towards much darker traditions. Now, of course, these dark, violent movements have always existed. They've flourished at different moments throughout our own history, of course. The lynching of black Americans throughout the 19th and then 20th century is just one example. The Redeemers in the South after Reconstruction. Various armed vigilantes and other forces of violence are not in any way alien to us. They are part of our traditions as well, but they are the opposite of our best traditions. They are the opposite of the better angels of our nature, as Lincoln put it. And we're seeing enthusiasm, support for that kind of model cropping up again in the idea among some on the far right growing and, and embodied by Trump that politics is nothing but sheer will to power, that the strong must conquer their enemies. That idea is completely antithetical to the ethos we have to the extent we have one in this country of collective self-governance and a pluralistic democracy in which conflicts are inevitable, uh, battles between interests and worldviews, but are resolved between people nonviolently mediated by our shared institutions. And I think that notion, the notion that is the opposite of that, of vigilantism and a repudiation of those institutions is what Kyle Rittenhouse, at least the figure in the conservative imagination represents. Last summer, Kyle Rittenhouse, the person, a child in the eyes of the law, did something indefensibly stupid and reckless and went to a protest in the aftermath of police violence, armed with a semi-automatic rifle and killed two people, wounding a third man. He has done literally irreparable harm to those three families, irreparable harm. And last week, he was found not guilty by a jury of his peers. And the same people who have been casting aspersions on our institutional safeguards, like the prosecution of the January 6th insurrectionists, have now turned around and are championing that jury and its decision. Now, independent of what anyone may think about the verdict, the idea that Kyle Rittenhouse is in any way a victim, a martyr, or God forbid, a hero, is deranged and despicable. And the idea is also an expression of what is fundamentally a vigilante ethos, one that is totally incompatible with a healthy liberal democracy. And this view of Rittenhouse is not just coming from the fringes. It goes all the way from the far right to the putatively more moderate center of the Republican Party. What a beautiful thing, huh? Not guilty on all counts. Kyle Rittenhouse did not deserve the ordeal he went through, but he certainly deserved today's verdict. For me, Lord, the defining aspect of Kyle Rittenhouse is not his tears. It's, in fact, his unbelievable bravery. If I were on the jury, I wouldn't just acquit him. I'd give the kid a medal. He was not guilty. He shouldn't have been indicted. And we should now move forward. And I hope that everyone will leave this young man alone now and let him go to living his life. I'm so proud of the jury and the jury system because it gave Kyle Rittenhouse a chance that all of these other talking heads on television didn't give him. They had him convicted a long time ago. That, of course, former governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie, praising the jury that acquitted Kyle Rittenhouse and, and also buying into the broader notion that being prosecuted and getting acquitted was itself some sort of violation of his rights after he killed two people. Let's be very clear here. Kyle Rittenhouse got a lot more process than most people in the criminal justice, justice system do. I mean, a lot more. Here's one example that comes to mind. It's in some senses a parallel uh, example. It's the case of a left-wing Antifa member who shot and killed a far-right Trump supporter named Aaron Danielson on the streets of Portland, Oregon last summer. Horrible thing. And this was during the protests in that city sparked by the police killing of George Floyd. And a few days after uh, that killing, members of a U.S. Marshal Task Force located the shooter, 48-year-old Michael Rinell, 
north of Portland and, quote, unleashed a hail of bullets that left him dead in the street. We've covered this before. The New York Times investigated the incident and learned details that, quote, raised questions about whether law enforcement officers made any serious attempt to arrest him before killing him. Then President Donald Trump even bragged about what seems to have essentially been, and again, as best we can tell from the evidence assembled by that investigatory team at the Times and from talking to white witnesses, seems to have been, at least in Donald Trump's understanding and possibly in reality, an extrajudicial killing. The U.S. Marshals went in to get him, and in a short period of time, they ended in a gunfight. This guy was a violent criminal. A lot of them out there. And the U.S. Marshals killed him. And I will tell you something. That's the way it has to be. There has to be retribution when you have crime like this. There has to be retribution when you have crime like this. This idea of retribution, meaning violence with violence, of essentially vigilante justice, in this case, backed by the state, is embodied by Donald Trump's worldview and his followers. And it is unraveling this country. Just look at the spectacle around Kyle Rittenhouse, the grotesque carnival atmosphere celebration for a teenager who took a weapon of war to a protest and shot three people, killing two, rendering a child an orphan, fatherless at least. It was an act of stunning stupidity, recklessness, and predation, and yet the right has turned Kyle Rittenhouse into a cause celeb. The mentality of Kyle Rittenhouse's supporters is exactly what is producing our democratic decline, so noted by the Stockholm-based think tank. That view, the celebration, of a world in which vigilante justice is how society should look is a view that poses an existential threat to what we cherish about this country, and it must be defeated.